Doctor Who, The Power of the Daleks, the first story of the second Doctor, is written by David Whittaker and Dennis Spooner and starring Patrick Troughton, Inika Wills and Michael Kreis. So the story was originally going to be called The Destiny of Doctor Who and Servants of Masters, but obviously got changed. The Doctor's regeneration was meant to be horrifying metaphysical change, which I can imagine at the time when I first saw the regeneration scene, which is Christopher Eccleston to David Tennant, I was thinking of Shrek turning from ogre to human, and then human back to ogre. Producers compare it to a hallucinogenic drug, LSD, which had the side effect of hell and dank horror. Unfortunately, all six parts of the story have been wiped out in the late 1960s, but some clips are still there. Like these, for example. They are not ready yet. Exterminate all humans. Exterminate all humans. Exterminate. So in August 2016, they announced the animation and got released in 21st of November 2016 to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the story. And I love the animation, and there's also 2020 version where the animation was recomposited and some sections were reanimated. So after the regeneration, Ben and Polly checks if the Doctor is breathing, and they had no idea how the Doctor changed into a different man. So a TARDIS made an awful noise, which disturbed the Doctor. The ring doesn't fit him anymore, so Ben shows the Doctor himself in the mirror, and William Hartnell's face was shown to get a flashback which haunted the Doctor and he went through the chest and he seems to enjoy playing his recorder then reads his 500 year old diary. So the Doctor opened the TARDIS door and unlike his previous incarnation he didn't check if it was safe outside but he obviously did when he said the numbers of oxygen and radiation. They're on the planet Vulcan. I like the Doctor's hat and how he acts a bit odd. It does show the post regeneration trauma so the Doctor finds the dead examiner and nicked his badge. So he then gets knocked out and got discovered by people. So they rescue Ben and Polly and they get taken to human colony. So in the lab, Janley lets Lesterson know about the examiner. It's really amusing when the Doctor annoyed Ben with his recorder every time he asked him a question. <laughs> so Governor Hensel questions the Doctor and he said he's an examiner and he plans to examine things later. So the Doctor, Ben and Polly are brought into the lab to examine Lesterson's capsule and everything seems to be alright. So later on, the Doctor returns, Ben and Polly followed him and they found two Daleks. Polly, Ben, come in and meet the Daleks. And there's a Dalek mutant crawling on the floor, pretty intense. So in part two, as the Dalek mutant escaped, Ben gave the Doctor a torchlight to have a look around. So the Doctor said the Daleks needed a power to wipe the entire colony out, which is suspense. So Lesterson came in and caught the Doctor in the lab, as so he showed him the examiner badge and confronted him about the missing Dalek. But Lesterson denies it and kept telling him that they're dangerous. As the Doctor and his friends get escorted out, Lesterson plans to find a way to make the Daleks work again. The Doctor finds a little device in an orange, which could be a microphone. While Lesterson, Janley and Reznode continue their experiments, the Doctor finds out that the Governor can't see him at the moment. And we get an amusing scene where he fixes the door handle, but it falls and with Ben and Polly laughing. Lesterson manages to bring a Dalek to life. Reznor gets killed by a Dalek, but Janley lied to Lesterson, saying that he is alive. So while Ben and Polly argues if Quinn is guilty, they get escorted to Governor's office. So after Lesterson removed the gun off the Dalek, he brings it there, and part two ends with Dalek saying, I am your servant, which is obviously a trap. I am your servant! And it's cool that in Victory of the Daleks, those Daleks kinda did the same when they tell humans the Daleks are their servants. So the Governor gave Lesterson a permission to continue the experiments, but the Doctor demands the Dalek to be destroyed, and the Doctor orders the Dalek to immobilize itself and walked off, but it woke up again because it obeys Lesterson. I thought it was funny when the Doctor threw a few pillows <laughs> right behind him. As he's looking for something, the Doctor figures out that Lesterson reactivates the Daleks. 
So Quinn gets taken to the cell, so the doctor and his companions came into Lesterson's lab and apologising for misunderstanding, but he went to the power generator to try and destroy the Dalek, but which made Lesterson kick off and ask the doctor to leave. So Janney and Bargen suspects that there's something not right about the doctor being the examiner, so Ben and Polly went to look for the doctor in the corridor. Ben leaves and Janley arrives, so they go to the communicator room and Janley puts Polly to sleep by putting her hand over her mouth. Horrible. Ben is annoyed that Polly isn't back and the doctor said she'll be fine, so he drags him to find Polly. So the Dalek asks Lesterson about humans and behind his back it powers up the machine and goes inside the capsule. So the doctor and Ben finds three Daleks going out of the capsule and makes a run for it. So everyone argues while the Daleks reveal to us about their plan. So the Doctor admits that he's not the examiner and Barjan is put in charge while Hensel leaves for two days. So the Doctor and Ben gets a note saying that Polly will be safe as long as they leave the Daleks alone. After Lesterson says the Dalek that he knew the Doctor was wrong about them, there's three Daleks saying we will have power. Great cliffhanger! The second Doctor is played by Patrick Troughton. The producer Innes Lloyd chose him because of his extensive and versatile experience as an actor when he got casted. Troughton's first thought was in order to differentiate William Hartnell, having him like a pirate type character with black face and turban, but Sidney Newman suggested to have him look a bit like Charlie Chaplin, which works really well. The second Doctor becomes more of a hero, a clown and a bit naughty. Unlike William Hartnell, he's not a grumpy old man. He's just mischievous, scruffy clown. The reviews of his portrayal as a doctor was mixed at the time, but now he's considered to be one of the best doctors, which I can see why. I think Patrick Troughton as the second doctor is wonderful. Pat is a fantastic actor. Somehow the fact he's nothing like Hartnell, you know that those two doctors are the same person with different face. If Patrick Troughton hadn't pulled it off, Doctor Who would have died in 1966 or 67 and I wouldn't be sitting here talking about it right now. Anika Wills and Michael Craze as Polly and Ben, Post Office Secretary and Sailor, love these two, they're very independent and likeable. Anika Wills isn't in part 4 and Michael Craze isn't in part 5 because of holiday, which I can't blame them because we all need a holiday. Bernard Archer played Bargen, the head of security and second in command for the human colony on Vulcan. He's against the governor, Hensel. Robert James played Lesterson, who's a chief scientist and brings the Daleks back to life, but then discovers the truth that they're evil. Pamela Ann Davy played Janley, who's an assistant and the villain of the story, as she's the member of Bargen's rebel group. Peter Bathurst played Hensel, who's a governor on human colony on Vulcan. Edward Kelsey played Reznor, who's Lesterson's assistant and got exterminated. The cast did a brilliant job. I love the Dalek's design and I have that version as an action figure. Whereas you press the button, it talks. But uh, sadly, uh, the batteries died. Again, the 1960s Dalek music is great, they're scary. The animation is pretty decent. Episode 4, Lesterson seems to be thinking something isn't right, so he shuts the power down and turns it back on to remind them that they're to obey him. The Doctor and Ben went to Bargen with a note about Polly's kidnapping and he wasn't helpful after they left. While they see the Daleks roaming around the corridor, Lesterson is starting to think that the Doctor is right about the Daleks. Janley tries to comfort Lesterson after when he finds out that Resno was actually killed. So Janley and Volma sets up a meeting for the Daleks to test their weapons out. They managed to destroy the notice board but didn't kill Janley. When they mentioned Polly, Ben revealed himself and gets knocked out and they found out that the Doctor is there as well. The Doctor gets taken to the cell next to Quinn and Lesterson sneaks into the capsule and sees more Daleks are creating with a scary cliffhanger. So Lesterson was horrified what he saw so he ran to shut down the power generator and tells Janley what happened. He seems to think he's ill, but he's not, and the Daleks can store power. So Lesterson runs to the cell where the Doctor is to warn him, plus Bargen and Janley gets everyone to think that he's mad. Blimey. As Polly is in the cell, she gets Volmer and Kebel to see the truth about the Daleks. While the Doctor is running his finger around uh, the glass water, like this, 
Ensel came back, but Barjan was like, I'm in charge, and he gets exterminated by the Dalek. So the Doctor and Quinn sneaks into the lab and Polly reunites with them. We get another great cliffhanger where the Daleks say Daleks conquer and destroy. Daleks conquer and destroy! Daleks conquer and destroy! So the Doctor, Polly and Quinn get taken to prison as the Daleks watch them. Balmer ordered Ben to wait in the guest quarters, so Polly, the Doctor and Quinn meets him there and he tells them about Barjan's mad plan. So we get a cool battle scene between the Daleks and Barjan and his rebel group. So the Doctor goes to the junction box with the cable to sabotage the Daleks' static power. While Lesterson risked his life to, by distracting them and the Daleks have been destroyed. There's great explosions, well done for low budget series. So Barjan tries to kill everyone but he gets killed by Quinn and leaving him in charge. So the Doctor and his companions left before they get given a bill. So they get back inside the TARDIS and it disappears with a damaged Dalek looking up which is creepy. So yeah the story has done well for low budget and introducing the new Doctor. The Daleks remain terrifying. What's your thoughts of this story? Drop it down in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.